Hello, Simon Dixon here, CEO of BankToTheFuture.com and Fund Manager of Bitcoin Capital. It's actually the week before Christmas, December 2015, and it's time to do some quiet reflection upon what an amazing year 2015 was, and perhaps we can fit some forecasts in for 2016. Um, so Bank to the Future earlier this year launched as a niche platform uh, for investors to invest in the future of finance. And uh, anyone that's involved in financial innovation and technological innovation um, can apply for finance on our platform. And we started, um, I think about April 2015 this year, having only had about 2 million US dollars invested through the platform. And now it's December just before Christmas and uh, you can see the, the, the stats on our homepage live, but we're approaching 45 million invested through the platform. So on my estimates, that's about the 2000% growth rate of investing in fintech and financial innovation through the banktothefuture.com platform. Now, what I'm more excited about is um, I can pull some of the statistics here to see um, you know, how investors performed and how some of the um, entrepreneurs uh, performed as well. But some of the stories and the difference that that's actually going to make in the future of finance in the years ahead. And what I'd like to do is go through some of those stories and also uh, review what I think some of the impacts can be as these uh, innovations that you are investing in actually start to have an impact in the world of banking and finance and start to do some serious disruption. So let's just have a look at some of the stats. Again, you can, you can get these on our homepage at banktothefuture.com. Um, number of investments through the platform, we had approximately 11,500, 11,838 to be precise at the time of this. Um, registered investors, we've got 16,243 professional investors, all investing in fintech, financial innovation, and waiting for further opportunities to be disruptive and uh, channel their funds and a portion of their portfolio into this extremely disruptive and fast growing sector. Um, in terms of dividends paid, um, we, we launched some funds and uh, we'll go through those uh, later, like Bitcoin Capital, but the total of all dividends paid um, since they launched, which was only about six months ago in 2015, um, was uh, approaching, so is the exact figure is 496,572,000 ,000 US dollars that we returned to investors already. So as far as I'm aware of, with the only online investment platform, thanks to the fact that we're using financial innovation in our products, um, that's actually able to offer returns short term in some of the longer term asset classes, which we'll go through. Um, number of invest, uh, dividends, we paid out 138,301 dividends, and that's growing every single day. Um, in terms of Bitcoins invested, we had over 10,200 um, Bitcoins invested through the platform. And uh, we had over 6,493, um, sorry, let me say that again, 6,459,000 stock coins invested through the platform. Um, so we're just paying out some absolute gratitude actually. Uh, to the investors out there, our professional investor community that's gone from strength to strength, um, where we're going, we believe that we're going to see some real impact in the future of finance over the coming years. So those are the overarching stats. Now let's go into some case studies and some actual real stories that are actually having an impact right now. One of the funding rounds that we just um, cleared was uh, for BitPesa. Now, BitPaysa are doing um, using Bitcoin in order to assist people to make payments in and out of Africa using Bitcoin, which is opening up global financial transactions and services to a sector that's traditionally been underserved. So to give you an idea, if you take um, Kenya, um, they actually became one of the, well, they became the third fastest growing economy uh, thanks to the implementation of mobile money and some various other factors that made them really grow fast. Um, but they only have about 3% credit card penetration. So there's a lot of financial exclusion uh, in these uh, African continents. And also, um, if you look at uh, the charges that they've been traditionally paying in order to move money in and out of Africa, um, you, you can sometimes get charged up to about 12% through the traditional players like Western Union. Now, earlier this year, they did a convertible note round. We were very uh, excited to launch 
um, not just equity on our platform so that people can invest in equity in companies, but also funds and also convertible notes. And so um, the convertible note was raised earlier this year um, with a real star lineup of investors that people were current investing in through the platform. And now thanks to the equity round that just completed, the note has actually converted um, and investors are already starting to see this company grow. Um, now, BitPaysa has also just uh, raged a, a bit of a court battle with some of the traditional incumbents. There's some real monopolistic players there um, with uh, M-Paysa and some of the traditional players. And so what was really interesting to see at the end of this year was the Kenyan Central Bank actually paid for an advert in their national newspaper um, and that was to warn people against uh, Bitcoin. In the West, originally, all the central banks were warning people against Bitcoin. They were extremely skeptical about it. They were extremely challenged by it. But if you forward now six years, you've had the Bank of England who are hiring blockchain innovation departments. You've got 35 banks all looking how they can use blockchain, the technology behind Bitcoin. But what's really interesting is that having spoken to the BitPaysa team, is that because now the Central Bank of Kenya has done paid adverts in the newspapers, um, you're getting record levels of people in Africa aware of Bitcoin, not for the right reasons, um, but it's making people curious. And we all know the story of what, that, what happens next. Once they're curious, they then investigate further, it creates an air of mystery, and BitPaysa have had you know, more and more people inquiring about their services. So it's putting early adoption out there, even though the original intention, I can smell a monopolistic rat when I see one, is probably that the traditional sector was funding the central bank in order to put some propaganda messages out there. Um, but unfortunately, you know, we live in a day and age today uh, where that can have the exact opposite effect as we've seen with uh, Bitcoin. So BitPays is going from strength to strength. Um, is really one of the case studies of the amazing impact that Bitcoin can have in the world of finance. Um, and they're opening up Africa to payments in, you know, in and out of Africa. We were delighted to end the year as well with um, Factum, who raised finance on our platform earlier this year. Uh, they raised over a million US uh, dollars. And uh, with Factum, they ended the year actually with an, an, an incredible announcement that Microsoft is actually opening up the Factum technology um, through their platform so that people can actually build financial innovation and build their products. So uh, for those of you that didn't invest in the Factum pitch, essentially what they're doing is they're building a layer of technology on top of Bitcoin. So one of the most important things that Bitcoin brought to the world was the invention of programmable money. And by programmable money, what we mean is that now anybody can build an application to do things with money that could never have been done before. And they can do it without permission because it's uh, anyone can actually build apps, just like you can go into um, an Android store and you can build an app on top of Android's, uh, Google's technology. You can do the same now with Bitcoin. And what Factum have done is they put a layer on top of it so you don't just do financial transactions, but you can use the, the, the amazing um, largest supercomputer in the world called Bitcoin to actually do many other things. So um, one of the things they were looking to do is they uh, secured a contract with um, a, a government in order to put their land title deeds on a blockchain, just like Bitcoin, where everyone can transparently prove and it's unriggable to prove who actually owns those land and assets. And that's just one case study. But delighted that they ended the year um, with uh, a contract with Microsoft really building into you know, the, the larger players that we saw throughout 2015, all getting involved in this sector about five to six years in after it was originally invented. Um, so Factum's another great story. Um, another company that raised finance through our platform that, the, that our investors co-invested with um, was Storage. And Storage is um, another example of where you can take the technology behind Bitcoin and um, use that, the, the, what they call the blockchain, um, to do very different things. And so what Storage has done is um, they're currently beta testing their technology and um, they're, they're doing you know, terabytes and terabytes of data now. And uh, what, what they allow people to do is store their data in a much faster, cheaper and more secure way than you can with a traditional way of storing your file, either on your computer 
or through a, you know, a cloud-based solution like Amazon S3 or Google Drive or Apple iCloud. The challenge with those services is that you need to entrust um, Apple or Amazon in order to take all of your data and store it. But if they ever get hacked, then there's a central point of failure um, where your data can be compromised. And we've seen this story again and again and again. No matter how big the company is, their um, data is being compromised because it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real target for hackers because it's all being stored in one place. What storage allows um, people to do is it takes those files, it chops them up into hundreds of thousands of different pieces, and then just like Bitcoin is a large decentralized network of computers all plugged together so that you can't just attack and hack one area, um, they use that same process so that your file is being stored across hundreds of different computers all around the world, encrypted, where you control a key whereby only you can access the data. Um, not only that, but the people that are actually renting out their computers by contributing to this large network of computers actually get paid for renting their, their, their spare storage capacity. And so to me, it's just such a game changer that now you can do something faster than a large central server, um, more secure because it's split up into lots of different places, and cheaper because essentially you're cutting out a big piece in the middle um, where it's just being distributed amongst the users renting out their hard drives. So it's, it's kind of like the Airbnb of file storage. Um, some of the other companies that raise finance, um, we were delighted to see Uphold. Um, now, Uphold was co-founded by Helsie Miner, who you may know because he co-founded Salesforce, um, and he also co-founded CNET and the company that later became uh, Google Voice. So he's a, he's a veteran entrepreneur, and he's put together a real great team um, and the, we, we invested in the first round and um, we then just closed a funding round just before Christmas, which um, saw an increase in the share price for the investors of $1.80 and it increased to $2.06. So we're seeing um, some of those increases in valuation already coming through throughout 2015 as investors' um, assets that they've invested through the platform are starting to mature and progress. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Uphold does, I strongly recommend you check it out. Um, what they're essentially doing is they're building a new model of banking without actually being a bank. Uh, what they're doing is they're allowing you to deposit um, your money into um, and, and essentially send it as if it were Bitcoin. So you can deposit your US dollars, send it as if it were Bitcoin into Canadian dollars or Great British Pounds or Hong Kong dollars. And between users, you can do that completely free. So it's being disruptive in the foreign exchange market. But also what they're doing is they're doing something that's called full reserve. For anyone that's uh, followed any of my talks, um, you'll know that actually 2016 is going to be my 10-year anniversary of having left investment banking. And we originally talked about the problems with fractional reserve banking, where banks lend out many times more than they have on deposit. Um, and uh, what, what BitReserve is doing is they're transparently publishing all of the funds and they've actually got more on deposit um, than, they actually, you know, than, they actually, than the clients actually have on deposit. So it's more than full reserve. It's not quite a bank, but they're also doing other things which are very important. Um, they're building technology whereby entrepreneurs can build lots of other technology on top of it. And so now you can build, you know, before you had to go to a bank, and get permission to build financial innovation. Now you can access uh, an API key from um, Uphold and you can do all sorts of things with money that's now easy, you know, as easy to send around the world transparently across the world, um, you know, free in different currencies. Um, and one of, those, one of the things that they're actually doing is opening up that technology for anyone to build on top. Um, one of the applications is actually taking the volatility out of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin volatility is very useful um, for speculators and traders and investors because there's a fixed supply in Bitcoin. It, a lot of the longer term investors are looking at you know, having a really increasing price in those Bitcoins because there's a fixed supply. But for when you're doing currency transactions, that's a bit challenging. So BitReserve allows you to take out the volatility where you can spend Bitcoin as Bitcoin but you can store the value in, a, in whatever currency, in gold or US dollars, um, which takes out the volatility, which is very useful when entrepreneurs are building applications that need to take out those volatility.
So for the last four years with Bitcoin, what we've seen is everyone criticize all the problems with Bitcoin. But what, what is now happening is that entrepreneurs, one step at a time, now that we've had a billion of venture capital investors in the sector and 45 million invested in the sector from Bank to the Future, um, which is representing approximately 5% of all investments, which we're looking to increase in 2016, um, you're starting to see that uh, every problem that people identify with Bitcoin can actually be solved because money's programmable and it's creating really interesting investment opportunities. Speaking about those, one of the, the, the companies that raised finance last month through our platform that built on top of the Uphold technology is Bitwage. Now Bitwage are taking one application of, of currency that is extremely inefficient. You know, I often wondered what a company like Google does when they need to pay you know, affiliates, millions of affiliates all around the world in different currencies. And you won't believe it, but there's actually humans typing manual transaction behind those. And, uh, you know, what do you do? We now live in a world where people are, are, are working in one country, employing people in another country, and you've got to start engaging in more exotic currencies like uh, the Philippines or, you know, the Brazilian currency. Um, and how do you pay those people? So what Bitwage has come along is that they're using the Uphold technology and they've developed a, a real simple way for people to be able to pay their global workforce automated, cheaper rates, and also take out some of the volatility from Bitcoin using Uphold, um, but also use the benefits of Bitcoin where you can send money as easy as sending an email. Um, one of the other things that I look forward to seeing throughout 2016 and beyond is other applications of the Bitwage technology. For example, Bitwage can now come along and do real-time payroll. Why wait till the end of the month? Uh, one of the things we did at uh, Bitcoin Capital, which is the fund that we raised um, through our professional investors on Bank to the Future, is we started paying almost real-time dividends. Um, and uh, what Bitwage can do is they can you know, pay people real-time and it can be automated and programmed. Um, which makes a huge impact on how we will get paid in the future. Look for that throughout the years ahead, now that it's been funded and got past its seat. Uh, speaking of Bitcoin Capital, we were delighted um, to have raised through Bitcoin Capital 1 and Bitcoin Capital 2, you know, um, approximately $2 million. And what's more exciting is that we reinvented and created a new form of investing that didn't exist before. And that is an asset class that's a venture capital asset class, which is we invest in companies for people that don't necessarily want to make all the investments themselves and get exposure to different investments that they couldn't otherwise get hold of. Um, and Max Kaiser and myself uh, founded that this year. We had two million invested. And of that two million, because we invested in the mining process as well as um, just venture capital and, uh, and companies, um, approximately half a million has now been returned to those investors within a few months, um, which is a, a real game-changing way. So now, rather than just investing in a long-term venture capital fund and waiting for those investments to mature, people have been accumulating their Bitcoins, the price works in a favor, um, and uh, they've now got you know, uh, approximately at today's price, which uh, we're looking at $460 per Bitcoin at the moment. Um, they've been, they've raised, uh, they've returned about half a million US so far. Uh, Bitcoin Capital 3 is actually going to be the only investment we're closed for applications towards the end of the year until the new year now. And we're leaving Bitcoin Capital 3 as the only investment opportunity throughout the, the period. So for those that are looking to get some uh, access to those dividends, what could be better for um, the new year to be actually having some daily dividends on a high risk, high return type of asset class that we've created here. Um, but that will be open and we've taken lots of applications throughout uh, 2015 for opportunities that we're working with to launch in 2016. So we look forward to bringing those to you. Um, some of those are going to be completely new types of um, investments that have never been done before. Um, one of the interesting things that we've been observing is how you can actually use a clone of Bitcoin by creating your own digital token or currency um, to raise finance in what's known as an initial coin offering. And a lot of companies have done that. For example, Storch, which we talked about earlier, they launched their own token first and then they sold equity on our platform. 
Um, also, Factum did the same. They launched their own token, and then we sold um, through our platform um, to uh, the equity round as well. So one of the opportunities that we're looking at 2016 is how you can combine these two asset classes of equity and digital token. And we're looking at some world's first there um, that we're looking to bring throughout 2016. Speaking of world's first, um, one of the, the, um, the stories that was very exciting was uh, from Bitcoin Group. Now, Bitcoin Group is a company that engages in Bitcoin mining, and they've been working for approximately a year with the Australian regulators to IPO the company and create one of the, the you know, one of the, the first mine, Bitcoin mining companies that has been through the extensive and challenging due diligence process of listing on a public market. Um, now, the public markets have a long history in oil mining and gold mining, but now in 2016, um, we're looking at Bitcoin Group bringing to market the Australian Securities Exchange, the very first Bitcoin mining IPO. Now, when we heard about that um, and we, th we saw that they got through the process um, and they launched their prospectus, uh, we were delighted that Bitcoin Group contacted us and allocated a portion of their pre-IPO stock um, to us so that we could then pull together a syndicate through our platform and create a new model of pre-IPO finance before the company actually goes public in 2016. Now, what we did, we did actually try this model earlier this year, but there were some challenges, unfortunately, because the company we originally started with was originally going to be listing on the London Stock Exchange. It was a different company to Bitcoin Group, but that fell through. So we were delighted to have a second bite at the cherry um, where we were able to work with a company that's going to be work listing on the Australian Securities Exchange. And we uh, completed that round. Now, this, this also had an interesting story with it. The funding round was so successful that we accidentally passed a threshold, a regulatory threshold, whereby more than 5% of the IPO was invested through the platform. And the rules are that if more than 5% um, is invested, you need to disclose it in the prospectus. But because we have a new model whereby people invest and they don't necessarily know how much is going to be raised up front, um, we had to actually reduce the amount invested uh, in order to continue meeting those regulatory requirements. And we hope that throughout 2016 uh, that IPO is going to get launched. And what that will be is the first case study where investors are investing in an asset class, which is you know, traditionally long term, but are going to be able to exit and uh, uh, actually float on the market and sell that stock. So we're delighted to innovate that new model further of how you can you, you know, com combine Bitcoin and our online investment platform to put some more liquidity into the traditional IPO markets. So we were delighted to work on that. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, one of the companies that was uh, earlier this year raising finance from us that's been performing tremendously well with their month-to-month growth, -month growth figures um, is Shapeshift. Now, Shapeshift is essentially allowing people, it's a Swiss-based company, um, and they're allowing people to exchange digital assets as easy as sending an email. What that means is that you could have a digital representation of gold and you could exchange that to Bitcoin or you could exchange that to another coin um, just in a real far simple way um, without actually having to even have an account with Shapeshift. Now the implications of that is that people can build technology which allow people to shift all these different coins, there's 650 altcoins that are around right now, uh, there's all the assets that are going on the blockchain, um, all of the traditional financial players are now looking at blockchain to create assets um, and now you'll be able to shift in and out of those. Implications being that you will be able to put uh, your money in whatever asset class you prefer and spend it as easily as if it were cash. Uh, and, and not only spend it as easy if it was cash, but do that digitally, globally for next to free. Um, and those are the implications of, of what they're bringing. To market and we were we were delighted to see lots of integrations um, and we even saw companies that raise finance through our platform starting to work with each other so a case study of what you can do when uh, they work together was coin payments coin payments um, are a merchant processor 
that allow businesses to accept any of the alternative currency coins and then they can receive it in Bitcoin or they can receive it as the coin or they can convert it in. But because they integrated with Shapeshift, it means that now anyone can pay in any coin they want um, and they can be shifted to Bitcoin and used as a traditional merchant processor so that you know, businesses can now accept um, payments. Speaking of which, one of the earlier stage companies, it was a bit earlier than the other companies on our platform, but um, eCoin has uh, brought a US dollar, Euro and Great British Pound debit card to market where you can load it with Bitcoins. Um, so what that means is that now if you've got Bitcoins and you're accumulating them, so for example, if you're a Bitcoin capital investor and you're receiving your Bitcoin capital dividends every day, you could actually put your wallet address where it goes straight onto a Bitcoin debit card. And those Bitcoin debit cards can then be converted into a traditional currency and you are now allowed to spend Bitcoin anywhere that Visa or MasterCard is accepted. So gone are the days of where do I spend my Bitcoins. Now while I'd love to see more and more uh, people accepting Bitcoins direct like we do throughout the platform, um, it's also very useful so that people can spend them anywhere that Visa or MasterCard. So um, that's really changing the game. And uh, that's uh, really a lot of the highlights. Um, one of the other final case studies, or there's, there's so many here I'd love to go through. Um, I think the final case study that we'll give for our, our, our year in review is um, one of the companies that actually followed a model of finance. If anyone's ever seen any of my videos, I talked about how the new model of finance is people are going to be taking early stage ideas and crowdfunding them through hybrid crypto and traditional currency crowdfunding. Um, and then they're going to be going onto an online platform like ours once they're ready for investors. And then they're going to be floating onto, a, you know, kind of an online venture capital fund like ours and then floating onto a blockchain based um, IPO. And that, that cycle is all starting to be built right now. And we saw one of the first case studies of that. So StartChat um, has built an application that allows you to, you know, when you use a service like WhatsApp or SMS, um, you're essentially giving your messages to the provider. And, uh, you know, there's no, there's no privacy uh, there. You're, you're giving your messages. When you deposit your money at a bank, you're, you're giving that money to the bank and, and you're subject to how they allow you to spend it. Um, with StartChat, they allow you to own your own money and own your own messages by using encryption um, and using the technology and currencies like Bitcoin and Starcoin. Um, but they were simply an idea that raised finance on the crowdfunding platform StartJoin. So for those of you who don't know, StartJoin raised finance on Bank to the Future in order to create a crypto hybrid crowdfunding platform um, and also launch our own currency that we use through the platform called StartCoin. Um, and now start chat, raise some funding on that crowdfunding for a very early stage idea. Um, they hit all their milestones, they built the technology, they built a great community, and then we launched it on Bank to the Future. And they were actually over, I think it was over 200% subscribed. So I think that's enough for now. Um, what I'm most excited about actually, and the, the final thought that I'd love to give to our investors watching this video, is that through financial innovation, and through using the blockchain, uh, we have the perfect opportunity now, not only to disrupt the traditional financial sector, which um, is disrupting a multi-trillion dollar market, um, and all those returns, uh, you know, if this sector grows as large as the traditional financial sector, which I believe it will be, but if you believe it will be, and if that does happen, um, then we've got the opportunity to redistribute these multi-trillion dollar markets away from banks over to the investors that are investing in this early stage because anyone investing in this sector is still a high risk, high return sector. You're all still early adopters um, and we're grateful to have you to make these changes and impact. Um, but that's going to be a big redistribution of wealth. Um, and the implications of that is that we can see more financial inclusion on a scale we've never seen before. Um, we can see more transparency in finance, which is something badly needed. Um, and we can see new forms of monetary policy and a redistribution of wealth uh, to those that are moving away from the traditional financial sector. Um, at the moment, there's two types of financial innovation which are being invented. One of those 
is the type of financial innovation that is building a product that allows a bank to operate more efficiently because they're very bad at innovation traditionally. Um, this is the type of fintech that we're not so passionate about um, bringing opportunities to our professional investors. Essentially, what's happened right now towards the end of the year is there's a cartel being put together of um, you know, about 35 of the largest banks who are all looking and filing patents about how they can use blockchain, even though it was originally designed as open source. So you're seeing lots and lots of patents filing and all the banks um, getting together and seeing how they can use blockchain. I, I just want to leave you with one final thought, um, that the most superior blockchain is the one that is decentralized, that is working at scale, that is the largest supercomputer in the world and cannot be rigged and cannot be fixed, and that is the Bitcoin blockchain. These other blockchains are interesting experiments, but what the end result is going to be is that it's going to allow banks to perform tasks cheaper, um, but they're not going to pass any of those benefits on to the consumer. So it doesn't actually have a material impact in the way that you're going to do things necessarily. Um, so what I'm way more interested in and the opportunities that we would want to bring to market throughout 2016 and beyond is not opportunities that allow banks to commit more crime, as we've seen, cheaper, but opportunities that take that market away from banks um, and allow consumers to get a better deal and do things in a way that's never actually been done before. So we think throughout 2016, 2017 and beyond, the, the investors invested in these early stage companies, they're going to be um, exiting their investments, probably not on a traditional stock market, but when we build products and when we fund businesses that are actually going to use the blockchain that disrupts the traditional financial sector, we can have more liquidity for the investors to exit their investments, trade their investments and do it in a more transparent way, um, faster. And the only way we're going to do that is when more companies that are, that are looking for finance in the financial innovation and technology sector are listing on platforms like ours rather than going to traditional finance and that our investor base continues to grow. So I want to end with one final message and that is to thank all of the investors and entrepreneurs that have created innovation and invested in innovation through the platform. I believe that in a few years time you're going to look back at your children and your grandchildren and you're going to tell them archaic stories about what it used to look like when banks ruled every area of our life. You're going to tell them stories about when banks used to rig interest rates which artificially made your mortgages higher. You can tell them stories that they won't believe about, such as how Cyprus took the depositors' money and we used to leave it without question in the banks. You're also going to tell stories about how ATMs were shut down in Greece and people couldn't access their funding and how the financial crisis led in some cases in Greece to 60% unemployment and what a massive effect banks and their practices had on finance. I believe with each cent that's been invested through the platform, you've actually moved us away from this system that we're going to talk about in the future um, of traditional finance that was so parasitical on us and our, and, and our humankind and how you've moved it over to this alternative financial sector which is based upon financial inclusion which has transparency built into it and just a better society. Um, I believe that all of the investors and all of the entrepreneurs that have contributed to that through investing in financial innovation and through building financial technology are actually the true heroes of this world and should be celebrated at this Christmas time in 2015 and we can't wait to see the impact that you've all had in the financial sector as this whole movement unwinds through 2016 and beyond. So enjoy your Christmas, have a happy new year and we look forward to seeing what we're going to do together in 2016, 2017 and the impacts this will have throughout the 2020s. And I've got one more final thank you, and that is to the entire team at banktothefuture.com that has delivered an amazing experience for our customers, that is building great technology and facilitating the platform that allows everyone to have the impact in financial services that we're all looking to have. Thank you.